Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast, and I am so thrilled to have with me today Aurora Gregory. And even though we work in slightly different industries, I already feel like she's a kindred spirit, and I haven't even known her that long. Now, Aurora um, was, as an eighth grader, was a finalist in a speech contest, and she didn't win, but that just might have been the start of her career as a communicator. And she is the co-author of Get Picked, Tips, Tricks, and Tools for Creating an in eh, Irresistible Speaker Proposal. And she works with brands to get their message right, create communication programs that connect with customers, and develop marketing strategies that work. And today, we're, actually, we're going to be talking about a subject that's near and dear to my heart, and that is, how do you get on stages? Part of your journey to becoming that authority, and especially once you're an author, is moving from that one-to-one -one model to a one-to-group model, where your business grows exponentially because now you're doing something once to a larger group of people and getting better results. So Aurora, I'd love to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much, Kim. And you're right. We have become fast friends and definitely kindred spirits. Thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> and I'm excited because Aurora sent me her book. Yay! And I've been reading through it and I'm going to, I've got a couple of sections picked out for our discussion today. So the book is called Get Picked. Go on Amazon. Get it. I have been thoroughly enjoying this book and I have been learning a ton. So I'm going to share a few things that just really impacted me. But first, Aurora, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself um, so the audience gets to know you. Thank you so much. Um, I have worked as a marketing communications consultant for probably about 20 years or so. And um, most of the work I do is in financial services, banking, um, something that's, you know, feels so far removed from, um, you know, from public speaking on an everyday basis. But one of the things that my clients um, challenged me to do um, probably about 15 years ago was to help them and their subject matter experts, the folks in their businesses that um, have incredible zones of genius, was to help them to get on stages where they could um, network, where they could um, share their services with a large audience perfect the way you described it perfectly at the be at the top of our interview which is you know having a one to many opportunity to be able to showcase what their companies did um, and when they asked us to asked me and my and my co-author David Pitlick to do this um, they were having some success but not great success and so to go in and you know kind of revamp what it was that they were doing and we um, were able to develop a strategy kind of a five pronged strategy for how to create great speaker proposals. And once we did that and got it refined, um, we were finding great success for them. And what we realized is that if anyone, any speaker could apply the strategy to their own speaker pitches or proposals, um, they could achieve similar success. So um, we decided to write a book and get picked as the result of that. And what's been awesome is uh, we've continued to have that same success for our corporate clients, but we're now seeing that same success happen for other speakers. And that honestly, for me, is something that just thrills me. I love seeing people achieve their goals. I love seeing entrepreneurs step out and take, um, take on the challenge of the stage and the microphone and find success in it. So um, I love to talk, I love to encourage, I love to coach. And um, being able to do that for speakers and entrepreneurs is, has been has just been really wonderful. So I continue to do my work as a as a marketing communications consultant, but it's been wonderful to develop relationships with speakers and to encourage them. That is awesome. And I'm going to read you just a quick quote from the book, and then I'm going to let Aurora go, and then I'm going to share with you a little bit more. But one thing that really kind of caught my attention. And I think it kind of applies to me at my stage in my speaking journey is don't despise the day of small beginnings. And I think we have a misconception that you go from being 
unknown, an unknown speaker, and all of a sudden you're speaking on stage to hundreds and hundreds of people. That's not you. Well, okay. If you're rich and you could afford to pay to get on these stages, yes, it can happen. You know, if you've got ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars that you're willing to throw at an event organization organizer, I'm sure they will let you on stage with a little bit of training. That is not how most of us begin. So in the book here, um, you say, don't overlook the value and benefits that investing in speaking at smaller events can bring. Small events can deliver big returns to your career, your business, and your message. And some of the benefits are there's a lot more opportunities out there. Local chapters have monthly meetings, so they need 12 times as many speakers per year, giving you 12 chances to speak instead of the one offered at a national event. Uh, there's less competition for these spots. And sometimes they're, they're really looking for people, so they're, they're kind of desperate. And there's a lot less out-of-pocket expense because you don't have traveling costs. So when I read that, I thought, well, wow, that's really cool. And it just really cemented in me because I'm taking the road of booking into a lot of smaller events this year and working up towards um, those bigger events. So thank you for the encouragement in your book. So Aurora, I'm going to let you loose now because I know you've prepared lots for us today and then we'll discuss your book a little bit more. Absolutely. So, and yes, I would encourage anyone to, you know, take those small steps. Most people um, discover either speakers or entrepreneurs, you discover them once they become very successful. And it, it creates the impression that sometimes you're, there was an, some type of overnight success. And that generally isn't true. Most overnight success took several you know, months, several years to actually develop. So be willing, be focused, be interested in taking those small steps, knowing that as you take steps, bigger things, bigger opportunities, bigger, um, bigger connections, things grow out of small steps. Um, that's how you build. So just a note on that. I just want to encourage everybody. It, you know, there's a reason that we shouldn't despise the day of small things. Um, but, you know, in terms of pitching yourself as a speaker, um, I want to talk a little bit about that five prong strategy that we talk about in the book, because I think that um, it really is um, such a game changer for, for mm -hmm. folks. So um, the first part of that strategy is you've got to have what we call a hot topic. Um, you decide and determine a hot topic by really knowing your audience really well. You need to be able to, to, um, to understand what are their pain points? What are their concerns? What are their challenges? What do they need? Do they need to be encouraged? Do they need a, um, a change in focus? What, what do they struggle with? You determine your topic and how you're going to approach that topic based on what your audience needs to know. What are the pain points that you are there to solve? Once you can define that, that hot topic, everything else kind of flows out from there. Now, Once Aurora, got, I'm going to stop mm -hmm. you for one second. Sure. A lot of our listeners are entrepreneurs who actually haven't been on stages yet. So can we kind of maybe just twist that a little bit because I think sometimes it's important too when you you aren't on those stages yet and you don't know what your audience is going to be that you can focus in on the same thing but focus in on what you specialize in because if sure. you haven't been on stages yet you don't know always know what the audience needs but a good I think a good starting place is knowing who you are having your hot topic message and how you help people and, you know, if you can develop that, then when you go to apply for stages, you'll already know whether it's something appropriate or not, as opposed to trying to guess what maybe what the audience would need. What do you think of that? Well, I think that's definitely true. You need to certainly understand what your zone of genius is, what your expertise is, what you're expert in. And you need to, most of us as entrepreneurs, um, you know, our ultimate goal is to sell our services, our knowledge. We're, we're trying to sell what we know and what we have to offer. And in order to do that, we have to um, have some clarity around um, not just what we do and what we're expert in, but who needs that. Mm -hmm. Is it women and out of the group of women? Is it moms? Uh, is, it, is it career women? You know, is it, um, is it men who are getting ready to um, experience maybe a change in life? They're getting ready to retire. Like who, 
who is it that you serve with what you sell? Mm -hmm. That acts as, as honestly, a, a type of peril for the audience that you would want to speak to. Because once you can define who your customer is, who you're for, who is who you're looking to have buy what you offer, you can translate that fairly easily into the type of audience that you're trying to get in front of. You know, when you define that really well, have a lot of clarity um, in the marketing world, we call that um, having great clarity around your avatar. Avatar yes. is just that fancy word for who is your target customer? Who's the mm -hmm. customer you're looking to sell to? Once you have some clarity around that, um, not only can you define your topic, but then you can also figure out when you decide, okay, I'm ready for stages or I'm ready to dip my toe into public speaking, you can go out there and you can search. So where do those, where do those people gather? Mm -hmm. What events do they attend? Um, where do they go to learn? Um, do they listen to more, you know, say for instance, if you're, you know, if you are what you offer is for, is for stay at home moms, they may not get out to a ton of events or they may go to events like say mommy and me groups. Um, they may listen to more podcasts. So as a speaker, you're probably looking to be more of a podcast guest and taking on a guesting type of strategy, we call mm -hmm. it, as opposed to kind of getting out into public. So defining with great clarity as an entrepreneur, who you, what you offer and who it's for yes. is critically important. And from there, so many other things open up, so many other opportunities for what you can do um, opens up. So I, I couldn't challenge everybody enough is to spend some time really thinking about what you offer and who's it for. Answer those two things and you'll be on your way. Awesome. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that a little bit because I know a lot of our listeners aren't on stages yet and they're looking to get on those stages so so important and i'm so glad that you stopped us so that we could you know address that because um it can feel a little daunting especially when you're getting started there's you know probably that quiet place in your mind where you're thinking gosh i really would like to speak but i don't i don't know where do i you know where do i start and you start really with considering your own business as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur considering your own business. So that was a great, a great important point for us to stop and take a, take a stab at. Um, and from there, as I said, you can, you, once you get to know that avatar, that target audience, you can start to back into what it is that they need and what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. What you offer is the solution to a problem for them. Yes. I don't care what you're selling. I don't care what you're offering. I don't care what your zone of genius is. It's the answer to someone's problem. And so that's really how you kind of back into that, that hot topic mm -hmm. is understanding what am I solving for this group? And out of that, you're going to be able to tease what your topics are and you'll be able to see um, how it connects to what you'll be able to talk, talk about on the stage. And just one other thing uh, before we get on to the second one, um, while I was while you were talking, was you know sometimes you may not know, but you know there's easy ways to do research. Um, Absolutely, social media is a great way to do research. If you, if you're not sure if your topic is going to resonate or how it kind of goes, or you're you're trying to think of a really good topic. Put some ideas out there on Facebook, on Instagram, you know, on, on LinkedIn and just say, you know what, I, I'm think I'm working on my signature speech and I was just wondering, what do you guys think of these topics and have people vote and then you know, then you have good solid knowledge and if you do it over several platforms, it gives you a good general idea of, you know, what would be some good topics for you. So just a suggestion. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would definitely use, you know, social media, the group, um, the group that follows you. And then I would make sure that on social media that you're also following people. Mm -hmm. um, one of the great, awesome things about um, Instagram, for instance, is that you can not only follow people, but you can follow hashtags. So yes. you might do a little research on what are the hashtags that your target customer is following. And you can Google that. Um, if you Google hashtags for stay at home, hashtags for stay-at-home moms, it will return to you what those hashtags are, and then you oh, can go, cool. and then you can go on to Instagram and follow those hashtags, and all of that content will start to come into your feed, and you'll start to learn about what they talk about, 
what their interests are, what their problems and challenges are. And then you'll be able to see, okay, what is it that I sell that answers one of these problems, one of awesome. these challenges. So really use social media as a tool. It, it really will make a difference in, in how you assemble um, your topic and your offerings as a speaker and as an entrepreneur, really. You don't want to do this in a vacuum. You know, get out there and explore, even if it's just digitally. And I love the fact that you can do these things for free. Because I think sometimes we think, oh, I've got to get an agent or I've got to get this or I've got to pay for that. You know what? There's so much stuff that you can do for free or very low cost. And, you know, if you're going to be a speaker, you need to invest that time. And, you, you know, you might need to invest a little bit of finances into it. I'm not talking about a lot, but a little bit to get some of those good quality pieces that you need. So anyway, you, prong number you're so two. so right about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, the second strategy, the second thing that you want to do, once you've got your, your topic kind of defined and you're, now you're going to be stepping into um, putting together an actual, say, description of what it is that you can talk about, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a title. Um, you've got to title your presentation something. And so the one thing you really want to do is you want to have a great title for your presentation. Um, it's gotta be a title that's attractive, that um, invites curiosity. Um, the title does uh, a couple things. One, it's the first thing that an event organizer or a conference planner sees when they look at your, present, at, at your pitch to them to speak at their event. It's the first thing they see. So really it's the first selling point. It's the first mm -hmm. time they will, you get the opportunity to sell your session. Um, and the second thing it does is if it's great to the event planner, chances are good it's going to be really great for an audience. So as you, if, once you get selected and that event planner starts promoting that you're going to be speaking, you want that title to, to draw your audience in. Nobody wants to speak to an empty room. So a great title helps to do that. And um, I always like to share um, a title that I found as I was writing the book, as I was trying to give, you know, suggestions of what are kind of run-of-the-mill titles versus what are much more interesting, exciting titles. And one of the best titles for a presentation I ever heard was this. The title is this. It's a, it, it goes like this. Um, and it was for an education conference for teachers. The title was how to cure nose picking and other great tools for dynamic educational um, experiences for children. <laughs> Is that not the best? <laughs> how I cured nose picking. And essentially, you know, what, what, the, um, what this teacher did was, it was, was a, a, pro a proposal by a teacher, but it was just so awesome because what teacher, especially for younger children, doesn't want to know how do you cure nose picking? <laughs> And when I read her description, she talked about how she used duct tape. And so how do you cure nose picking with duct tape using duct tape? So for all we know, this teacher had a strip of duct tape that had cute little animals on it and or a piece of duct tape that she stretched across the student's desk. And for every day that they didn't pick their nose, she gave them a sticker on their strip of duct tape. But the fact of the matter is she created this amazing title for her presentation and even us we're not teachers kim and we love that title like i'd go to that session i want to know how she did that <laughs> so that's that's what the title it's a the title is usually you know anywhere from 9 to 13 maybe 15 words it's a small piece of copy but it's super important that you invest the time to write a great title once you get that title done, you're going to move into describing your session. And I, it, that's, that paragraph is probably going to be anywhere from, say, 125 to probably no more than 200-ish kind of words. It's a short paragraph. But in that paragraph, you want to use elements of story. And, you know, we hear that a lot in marketing, Kim. You and I probably hear that every other, you know, every other blog post we read. And so here's the Here's the, you know, the basics of story. story. A story has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and there's a hero, okay? In this story, the hero is your audience. They're going to be the, you're going to show them how to be the hero of their own story. 
the beginning of your of your of the description of your presentation should talk about um, where they are right now, the problem that they face, the challenges that they struggle with, um, you know, where they are right now that's not ideal. Mm -hmm. The middle of that paragraph needs to talk about what it is that can be brought to that problem. This is where you can talk about your kind of zone of genius. Um, you you want to be able to talk a little bit about maybe how you went about addressing the same problem. That's the middle of the story. Um, you're talking about how they're going to come, kind of come out. At the end of the story is the success that they're going to find following using this this solution tool, whatever it is that you're going to be talking about from the stage. Um, those four things um, constitute a story that you're going to tell in this paragraph. And it's important that when you write that, that you use words like they and the audience. You don't want to use words like, I'm going to talk to them about, I'm going to tell you how. You want to be able to say, the audience will learn. Um, following the sessions, um, attendees will be able to. You want the description to communicate that you're there to serve and to train them so that they can, in fact, become the hero of their own story. Come out the other end with a different outcome, be different than they were than when they started or when they sat down. You know, it's funny you said that because the section, I might as well read it now because the section I was going to read to uh, the audience was brevity is a virtue. If Abe could do it, so can you. Talk about a hook. Most se session descriptions have a fixed word limit. These limits are often a few hundred words. So is it even possible to tell a complete story in so few words? Consider this, Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg's Address, one of the most famous speeches in American history, was a mere 278 words long. If good old Abe could tell a gripping story about our nation's struggle for liberty in only a few brief paragraphs, you can tell your story just as succinctly and hopefully as mem memorably. Memorable. Uh, one of those days. Being economical in your word choices is a true art it and is <laughs> funny i actually struggle with this and you would think kim you're a writer how do you struggle with this i struggle with it because i write thousands of words a day i write chapters at a time you know where i get to expand out ideas you know you give me a short word limit and i'll spend all day just to write a few hundred words briefly now i am getting better at it but i'm like i just i don't like this i just want to can, can i have five more words please <laughs> it's so true and sometimes you're you know wanting to beg like you beg for that the event organizer especially if you're responding to a call for speakers which we can talk a little bit about some people might not know what that is but um you you really wish like gosh couldn't you have just given me space for five more words um and a tip for that because it is kind of daunting to to write you know very tightly as we say in the writing business is get it all out on paper ignore the word count as at your start and yes. then edit it down i think once you can get all of the all of your ideas you know with the idea of brevity kind of in your mind but just write and then go back through and and you'll you'll really start to see okay i don't need that okay this sentence is actually kind of the same as the sentence beforehand um you can you'll be amazed at how you can edit yourself down and the other thing to keep in mind is the description of your presentation is not your presentation. Exactly. And I think our tendency, and I've, I've, I've seen this with a lot of speakers, especially um, folks who are new to speaking, is you ask them, so what do you talk about? And the natural tendency is to want to give the whole presentation right then and there. And that's not the goal. The goal is to get picked, not to, you want to be able to give that presentation on the stage. And I think something else too, and I've learned um, as a writer, is your use of vocabulary is important. Many times there are words like you use succinctly in that paragraph. And there's a lot of vocabulary words that have bigger meanings that you can put into your paragraph that still have the same meaning as opposed to the five words you've just used to describe succinctly you could actually just use the word succinctly in one word so i have a friend i really want to introduce you to today 
His name is called Thesaurus. <laughs> and he's awesome. I know him too. And he's amazing. <laughs> so when you're going through um, and writing your description, try to find those words that, you know, have lots of meaning, you know, but you don't have to use as many of them. Another hint and tip is if you have a friend who's an English major, give it to them, man. They'll rip and tear that thing apart and rewrite it in the word count you need. And, and they'll have great vocabulary and it'll sound delicious at the same time because they know all these really big vocabulary words. And just another hint and tip from a writer's point of view, when you're doing this speaker proposal, be careful about using the same word over and over again. You know, like don't use audience 50 million times. You know, look it up in thesaurus, find different words. If you're going through and you've used, now I'm not talking words like it, the, you know, those general words, but if you've used audience six times on a page, it's too much. So it's so true. So true. And, and, you know, you think about, you know, audience, attendees, but don't, don't shy away from actually using the word that describes the group. So again, we'll just continue with our example of moms. Um, you could certainly use the word moms. Moms will learn. Moms will be able to, um, those use those words interchangeably. Um, I'm like you, Kim, I'm always examining my sentences to see, <laughs> okay, did I use the same word in the sentence twice? Did I start, start two sentences in a row with the same word? You know, those types of things, they're subtle, they're subtle changes changes, but they can really make a difference in how powerful your description ends up being when you're done. So this is not something you're going to sit down and just kind of bang out in a short period of time. Um, writing briefly, writing succinctly, writing powerfully takes some time. So give your, be patient with yourself and just keep working at it. And, and I like the point you brought up about starting sentences the same way all the time. So the way you, you conquer that is if you're, you know, it is or the, the, you know, like if you're using that same thing over again, think of the sentence you want to change and put it in the reverse order. Perfect. Great, great tip. You know, change the order of the sentence around. So like if you've got a sentence that's got like three or four parts to that sentence, try putting the last part first and you'd be amazed at how you can create variety in your writing uh, just by doing that. It's so true. Now we're starting to run out of time here, Aurora. So you know what I think we're going to do is I want to cover the other ones we didn't cover today, but you know what? I think I want to have you back on and let's make this a really a two part, uh, podcast and I also want to talk about your book and your writing journey and there's no way we can do all of that in just the few minutes that we have left so I want you to share one final thought um, for our listeners and we are going to record part two and have that for you that's awesome and I'd love to come back and, and continue to have our conversation um, you know I would just want to encourage you know the audience um, Public speaking, you know, has been described as, you know, people's greatest fear that they would, you know, I, one of the things that I, I love what Jerry Seinfeld, he's got a little bit in one of his comedy acts that, you know, as he talks about public speaking, that people would rather are, would rather um, not give the, they, they're afraid of pub, public speaking more than they're afraid of death. And he says, people would rather be the guy in the box than the one giving the eulogy. And public speaking is a skill and you can learn it. And there is nothing more powerful than being able to get up on stage, share what you know, um, and help people solve challenges and problems that they have. It's a benefit to, to that audience. Um, it, there's something very rewarding about helping people, and it, and it will ultimately benefit you and your business. Um, one of my favorite marketing um, consultants, Peter Shankman, says, if you know your stuff, you should be on stage because people believe people who are on stage. I want to just encourage you, whatever your zone of genius is, you know your stuff and you do belong on stage. So be thoughtful about this and really strongly consider adding public speaking to your marketing effort. It, it really is a powerful tool. 
And just one thing to note, there is an amazing organization. If you're terrified of just speaking in public in general, um, this organization will really help you overcome it. They give you support. I'm part of the organization and I learned a lot. It's called Toastmasters and it is worldwide. And it'll take you from having never spoken on stage and get you to be very comfortable speaking in front of groups. And one of the things I love about Toastmasters is the feedback that you receive. I prepare a lot of my speeches and I try them out at Toastmasters and my Toastmaster group gives me lots of support and help and feedback on areas on how can I take this one little thing and improve it. And so, you know, if you've never even spoken in front of a group, Toastmasters is a great organization. It's encouraging. You know, you, you'll feel comfortable. They will help you write your first speeches. They give you mentoring and support. And they just get you used to being in front of a group of people. So that's my suggestion for it. If you've never spoken before and you're looking. But even if you are, you know, decent and you just want to improve your skills, Toastmaster is a great organization. Now, they're not going to teach you how to sell from stage. That is a specific skill that you need to get training on. But if you're just looking to get comfortable on the stage and general body language, wording, things like that, Toastmasters is amazing. So this has been Aurora Gregory and Kim Thompson Pinder on the Author to Authority podcast. Thank you so much for listening today and make sure that you tune in to part two, which will be the very next episode to this one and have a great day, everyone. Bye now.